Hello, I believe we are live. Let me get see that everything is like it should be. I apologize for being a little bit late, but hello everyone. Let me know if you can hear me okay. I believe you should be able to. I must admit I am a little bit at sixes and sevens. I had a little bit of computer trouble, just like all of a sudden. I was like, what? But happy Friday to everyone. It says now that I am live. And Flora Swinney is here from East Texas. Hello, um, Flora Swinney. And Rebecca is from, hey, I got two people from, see, Rebecca's from East Texas. And then Flora Swinney is from East Texas. I got two people from East Texas. Well, hello. And then Shaniqua Denise is here. She says she can hear me okay. And Blue Skies is letting people know I'll be here soon. I am so sorry. I'm not usually late. But I was having some technical difficulties, which are continuing as we speak. So we'll see what happens with that. So I was trying to do something interesting tonight. I was going to try to um, create a little bit of a video that would actually show you how I actually use my planner rather than just like hold it up like this. Well, the video is coming up, so we'll see what's what. So let me go ahead and at least give the greetings. So for those of you that have joined us live, how you doing? Thank you so much for jumping on with me tonight. I am Denise Jordan. And what I plan to do tonight is to show you how I use my planner, which is this one. It's the Inkwell Press to manage my home. And when we've been talking the last couple of weeks about homemaking, one of the things that people have been asking was, how do you manage your home? And I said, well, I use my planner. And then I talked about the weekly home blessing and the swish and swipe. But people wanted to know, how do I go about doing that? So I've actually, I kind of got my planner all fleshed out for the month. And then I, um, to show you how I do that. And then I got a couple low tech notes to show you what I mean by doing certain things. So let me go ahead and give a little bit of greetings and then we'll get started. And I got people here from all over. So we've got Rebecca from East Texas and she said, is anyone here yet? And yes, here I am. And then Flora Sweeney is from East Texas. And you know, I want to say, well, do you guys know each other? But of course, everyone in East Texas don't know one another. And then my friend Libby Ray is here. Hello, Libby. Glad to have you there as well. And then, you know, the two Texans are saying howdy neighbor. And then Blue Skies is on and she's saying hi, everyone. And hey, Michelle from My Everyday Wife Life is here. And let's see, uh, shine bright to glow, uh, shine bright. I think she told us last week her name was Rena. So let me know if that's right or wrong. So, hey, uh, uh, Rena, glad to have you back again. And then we've got Brooke Jimerson. She's with us as well. So hello, Brooke. And then I already spoke to Shanique with Denise and she's let me know that she can hear. And then I've got Dawn Hoger, who is on with us as well. She's from Illinois. Kelly Espinosa from, uh, uh, wait a minute, got the wrong one. Juan Hutchinson from Arizona. And then Shaniqua Denise is from Mississippi. And Kelly is from Michigan. So, hey, Kelly, I'm glad you're here too. And then um, Joetha is from Metro Detroit. So uh, Joetha has been with us several times. So glad to have you back. And then here's another name twin. You know, when I was in high school, there were only three Denises in my whole school. Me, I was Denise Stewart, Denise Pallone, and Denise Browning. That was it. And now I met lots of people named Denise. So it's nice to have a name twin. Margaret Schaefer from Wichita, Kansas. Tamara Thompson. Hey, Tammy, haven't talked to you for a while. Uh, Shine Bright. Now, Shine, remind me. Now, I think your name is Rena. And if I'm wrong, let me know. And then we've got Laverne that is saying hello from Connecticut. So, hello, everyone. And tonight we are going to talk about my planner. I'll just put a little bit of note in like that. And so that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to talk about my planner. And let me just see if this um, upload has been completed. 
So hopefully you guys can still see me when I'm checking that because um, here's the thing. I didn't bring my other um, iPad up here, so I don't have it right beside me. So when I'm looking, when I share screens with you guys, I have the iPad so I can look over there to see if you guys can see the screen that I've got. So since I didn't bring that up with me tonight, I will just have to, you know, just wing it. And then if you guys can't see what I'm showing you, then um, you'll have to be sure and put a note uh, over there so that I can see that. And then I've got Walter Aguilar from the California Bay Area. So, hey, Walter. Oh, shine bright. Her name is Charlotte. And I'll just let my husband get the, get the phone. He knows I'm on. So can't help the, can't stop the phone ringing, but shine bright is Charlotte. Okay. Shine bright is Charlotte. And I like to, to know what people's names are. Okay, so we got that. So I'll get that off the screen. And then, oh, and my sister, Levina, jumped on. So, hey, sis, glad to have you on with us as well. And, well, I got an interesting question. Have I? Well, this is from Shane Watson, thanking me for everything that I give, give them with. So you are quite welcome, Shane. You are glad to, to be with us tonight. And then um, my sister, Levina Stewart, joined us. So good to have her with us as well. And then Kimberly Doyle is here from Tennessee. And Shane says he needs it. So, okay. So now I'm just going to go ahead and get started and hope the video was ready. Usually I'm pretty low tech and I was going to try to be high tech tonight. And we'll see how that works. So one of the things that I do, like as you guys know, and I'm going to go ahead and I'll present the content. And then once I get that in, then I can answer questions that you guys may have. Just so that the people that just want to hear the content can jump off when I'm done. I don't want to keep people too long and just be chatting like I've been doing tonight. Sorry about that. So what I do is I follow the fly lady cleaning process. That is what I use. So what I will do is that, you know, when we look at the fly lady cleaning process, it's a series of daily, weekly, and then zone cleaning tasks. And I will plot those out on my calendar. So this particular calendar that I have is called the Inkwell Press. And one of the things that it will provide us is like a little mission board like this. And when I'm using the mission board, I can kind of see what my focus is for the month. And um, right here, one of the things that I put on the mission board was that I wanted a clutter-free home. Now, it's going to take more than a minute to get there, but it's something that I am working on. So I'll put that as one of the images on my mission board so that I know I can continue to work in that regard. Now, let me just check real quick and see if this um, video is done uploading. And for some reason, it's still uploading and it doesn't look like it's done much. So we may not be able to use it tonight. So I'll just have to go through and be low tech tonight. Sorry. So then the next thing I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll look at what are the daily things that I do. And one of the more one of the daily routines is what we call the daily swish and swipe. So this is a daily swish and swipe and the daily swish and swipe includes wiping down the bathroom mirror, wiping out the sink, and then you swish out the toilet. And swishing out the toilet includes wiping the handle, wiping the toilet seat, and then you swish the toilet bowl. Now on Mondays when I'm doing my weekly home blessing, and again, this is my yeah, on Monday, when I'm doing my weekly home blessing, and I'll show you a little bit more about that in just a second, I might use something like Lysol or Clorox toilet bowl cleaner. But I have been moving to a little bit more environmentally friendly product, like some of the plant-based products and that kind of thing. So I might use a method anti-bat toilet bowl cleaner or something like that. 
but those are the mean the things that I'm doing. So now uh, I just happen to notice that Wendy's got a cleaning tip over there. So Wendy, I'm going to give the content first and then I'll, I can answer the questions at the end. So if you could save that and put it back in, because like I said, I didn't come, I forgot my iPad, so I don't have the uh, opportunity to look when Blue Skies will send me the question. So Blue Skies, if you can just note the question and then once I'm done with the content, then you can pop it up back there again or remind Wendy to put her question in again. So, okay. Okay, and then I see Rebecca wants me to repeat the concept statements. Okay, so, and I'll type them into the chat box. That's what I'll do. And I see Libby saying something about a great question. So guys, make sure you get it in there again. So we have daily routines which include um, the swish and swipe. Now that's one of the things that I include in the, that the Fly Lady cleaning system includes is the daily swish and swipe. And just as a review, the daily swish and swipe, the daily swish and swipe includes wiping the bathroom mirror, because you clean, you go from cleanest to dirtiest. So you wipe the bathroom mirror, you wipe out the sink because, you know, you've been brushing your teeth, you spit in the sink. So there's toothpaste in the sink and then you swish out the toilet, which includes first wiping the handle on the toilet. You know, you clean the handle, then you wipe the toilet seat and then you swish out the toilet bowl. That's the daily swish and swipe. And you do that every day in all of your bathrooms. So, so there's that one. Um, so you've got your daily swish and swipe, and then you have your weekly routines. So then you have your weekly routines. And the weekly routines, there's something you do um, every day during the week. Uh, so, for example, on Monday, <laughs> so on Monday is the weekly home blessing. And I'm going slow because I know some people are writing this down. And then on Tuesday, is free day. I'm going to pop that in just so you guys can see it. So Monday is the weekly home blessing. So now let me take, and then Tuesday is free day. So now let me take that. And I, I've learned that when that little bar is across there, you can't see it. So here's what's involved in the weekly home blessing. You're going to strip your bed. You're going to take those sheets off and throw them in the wash. Now, part of your daily routine includes starting a load of laundry every day. You throw a load in every day. But on Monday, the loads you throw in are your bed sheets and your towels. So you strip your bed, throw those sheets in the wash, and then you dust. So you just dust your surfaces. You're not moving everything all around. You're just kind of dusting things that you can see. You um, wipe down the mirror. So like I do the hall mirror the, and I'm already doing the daily swish and swipe. So I'm already getting all the mirrors in the bathroom. So if I've got a hall mirror, if you've got a storm door, maybe you've got a, a dog or a child and there's fingerprints on the door or on the window, that kind of thing. You just kind of wipe those down real quick. You sweep your floors and then you mop them and then you empty all the little trash cans. So like all the little trash cans that you have in the different bathrooms and things like that, you kind of pull those out, change the liners, put the trash cans back. And then when I say sweep and mop, you're looking at the main entry patterns in the rooms. So just like right down the middle, right around the bed, when you're doing the kitchen floor, that kind of thing. And then you sweep those floors and then you mop the ones that need to be mopped. But again, if you're in the bathroom, you're just mopping the main traffic pattern. Because the weekly home blessing is called the weekly home blessing hour. It's only supposed to last one hour. So each of those little tasks only lasts about 10 minutes. So 
when you strip your bed, you pull those sheets off, your bed's airing out, and you throw those sheets in the wash while your bed's airing out. While those sheets are in the wash, you're dusting, you're doing your mirrors, you're doing your um, sweeping and mopping your floors, and you should be able to get that done in no more than 15 minutes because you're not trying to make beautiful tracks in the carpet like Fly Lady Cat says. You're just doing the main entry patterns, and you're going to pull the little trash can liners out of the trash cans and set them back in the bathrooms or wherever you have them and then discard all those. That's the weekly home blessing hour. It's not a deep clean. As Fly Lady Cat says, it's a blessing. And Fly Lady Cat is my Fly Lady mentor. She's the best Fly Lady and I talk to her every week. But so there's that. So now I see that uh, Rachel is saying, yep, sheets every Monday. Because here's the thing. You know, as human beings, as people, we sweat. And especially as it gets closer, you know, to the warmer uh, days. So we have we sweat, we have bodily fluids that, you know, get on the sheets and things like that. You scratch. So you have dandruff, you know, like skin sheds and those kind of things. So you strip the bed and you put those sheets in the wash every week. So then while you've got those in the wash, then you're doing your other things. When they get done washing, throw them in the dryer, get them out of the dryer, put them back on the bed and make your bed. And one of the parts of the daily task include making your bed every morning. But on Monday, you strip the bed before you make it. And then you make it every morning after that. Um, oh, yes. And Walter's reminding everyone to give me a like. So yes, please give me a little like that kind of thing. Um, so that's the weekly home blessing. So now let me type in the rest of it. So then on the daily routines, uh, I included that you strip your bed. Wait, nope, nope, nope. I'm doing the daily routines now. So, okay. So now that we've, I've told you what we do on Monday, which includes the weekly home blessing. Tuesday is a free day. So then on Wednesday is the plan day. So what do we do on the plan day? So on the plan day, I pay my bills, I balance the checkbook, I order groceries, and I clean my refrigerator because I don't like to put groceries, fresh groceries in a dirty refrigerator. So I clean my refrigerator every Wednesday because I'm going to order groceries on Wednesday. And usually I'll order the groceries on Wednesday or up for a Thursday delivery or a Thursday pickup, depending upon how much time I've got. If I'm doing a pickup, I'll order groceries on Wednesday for a Thursday um, pickup. If I'm going to order a delivery, then I'll order groceries on Wednesday for a Wednesday delivery. Then I can just go ahead and get those put back in. But it's dependent upon how busy I am. So Wednesday is your planning day. You pay your bills. You balance your checkbook. You plan your grocery list. You do your menu planning for the week. And actually, your menu planning for the next week because you're ordering groceries that you're going to be using this week and next week. Or if I'm doing a monthly grocery order, which is what I try to do, I've tried to have my meals planned according to that. But I must admit, I'm not that good that I plan meals for a month. I usually just plan them for a week at a time. But I can usually figure out what I'm going to cook from the stuff that I've ordered, particularly if I've looked ahead in a couple of the books that I'm using. Uh, and let's see. So Wednesday is the plan day. And then um, Thursday is Aaron day. So Thursday is errand day. So if I've got to run out and do any errands, I do it on Thursday. So I usually have a hair appointment every Thursday at 10 or 11. If I'm doing a grocery pickup, I'll pick the groceries up while I'm out. I usually make a target run if I need to get toilet paper or um, paper towels or they have the kind of hosiery that I like. Just little things like that. Then I'll stop at Target. My husband says I run them up, you know, on the days that I go out. I usually grab lunch at either Starbucks or somewhere like that, stop at the post office, 
uh, to, for at the post office box, and then I'll make a run on home. So that's my errand. If I've got books to drop off at the library, I put those in the car Wednesday night so that I can drop those off while I'm out. So that's what's happening on Thursday. And then on Friday is car and purse day. So Friday is car and purse day. So what does that mean? That means I clean out the car and the purse. Well, my husband cleans out the car. He's always done that. So he'll clean out the car. And I remind him like, honey, today is car and purse day. Can you clean the car out today? And my car, I don't know. I don't know how it gets so messy, but it does, particularly during garden season. But, you know, you might have paper bags or just different little things in there, just little minions that end up in your car for you young um um, homemakers with children, you know how messy cars can be. So, you know, clean out your purse. It's usually full of tissues and papers and receipts and things like that on Fridays. And then clean your car out on Fridays. So get making sure all the book bags are out. Um, any kind of crayons, crumbs, you know, the kind of stuff. You've got car seats in the car. Get the vacuum cleaner out there and kind of get those all, you know, vacuumed out, that kind of thing. But get that done on Friday. So car and purse day on Friday. And that's not a lot of stuff that you got to do on Friday, but it's car and purse day. Get that done. And then um, Saturday. is family fun day. And these are actually the fly lady um, names for these particular areas. So Saturday is family fun day. So that means you just enjoy your family. There's no zones or any assigned tasks for Saturday unless you are a working um, mom. If you work outside of the home, then all the things that I'm talking about that gets done during the week, you don't have time to do that during the week. So you're going to have to push some of those things to Saturday. The weekly home blessing, you can break up. You know, I showed you the six things that you do for the weekly home blessing. You might want to break some of those up and maybe do a couple on Monday, a couple on Tuesday, and a couple on Wednesday. Or you might say, you know what? My weekly home blessing is going to happen on Saturday because that's when I have the time to do it. That's okay. All the other things that I have down for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, some of those things you may still be able to do on those days. Some of those things you might need to push to Saturday and Sunday. So it just depends upon how you can organize your week. Now, let me just check to see if this video is ready. I don't know why it keeps saying eight minutes left. Something's happening here that I'm not sure. Um, on this, like I said, it was going crazy one while back, so I guess it is still not, it's not uploading. So I'll just have to say, uh, we probably just won't be able to get to that. So I'm sorry, I tried to be high tech and it didn't work tonight, so sorry about that. So one more thing I wanted to tell you was so Saturday Family Fun Day. And then I'll go back over all of those in just a second. I just want to make sure I get them all in. And then Sunday is Renew Your Spirit. Oh, shoot. I, I can't spell when I'm trying to get this on, just like when I'm writing at the board. So Sunday is renew your spirit. That means go to church, go to the temple, which most of us aren't going to church right now because of the COVID-19 um, pandemic. So we're either doing church online, you might have virtual church, you might be doing parking lot church, or you might be doing something from home. Or if you don't go to church, you might just be relaxing and just enjoying your family. But it's a day to renew and tend and care to you. So that's why Sunday is called renew your spirit. It's like a reef. Fresh, so you can reset for the week. So now let me just go back a little bit and just kind of see what um, some of the comments are. And I'll start at the bottom. So Janice said, very glad to get weekly directions to see how I've actually gotten something done. And yes, when you, oh, so now when we go back, I'll pull my planner up and then I'll show you how I do that. But um, but yes, weekly directions to help you get things done. 
And then, um, so someone is talking about, um, do you date yourself, get your nails done, do something for you? So on Friday night date night, you know, like we will watch a movie and like this Friday night, we plan to connect with my daughter and her family and uh, my son and his one of my sons and his family. And we're going to all watch Coming to America. Now, they're going to be watching in their house or I'm going to be watching here. You know, that. but what we're going to do is we'll pull it up at the same time and then we can chat once the movie's over, that kind of thing. If you're a single homemaker, like you're making the home for you and your family, you don't have a significant other, you still want to do something fun for yourself. So if it's just you and the kids, then that Friday night can be family movie night, that kind of thing. And the kids can look forward to that. If you don't have kids and it's just you by yourself, then maybe you and a girlfriend or you and a guy friend complain, hey, it's Friday night. Do you want to do a movie night or just something like that? But plan something interesting. Maybe that's the night that you give yourself a mani and a petty and you just do something to treat yourself. That's what Friday nights are for. Uh So Tanya says the car, her purse and car is a tough one. And yeah, sometimes my purse gets crazy. It gets so heavy with paper and receipts and all that kind of stuff. I'm amazed at how much junk I can have in it. It's nuts. But that's the way it is sometimes. Um, Jordan Page, who I love at Fun Cheaper Free, has some great car cleaning hats. So yeah, you guys might want to check her out so she, you can see what she does. She's got eight children. So trust me, that woman knows how to manage and how to clean. Uh, let's see what else. So Blue Sky says, you know, Friday night's going to be a tough one for her because, you know, she's a single person. But again, you know, plan movie night with a friend, uh, connect with someone virtually and do movie night together. And then if you're recently going through a separation, that's going to be very hard very hard because you're used to having someone to spend that time with. But what you're going to have to do, Rachel, is come up with a new normal. So I want you to, to put that in your head and write it down. A new normal. A new normal. Because the old normal is no longer exists. You have to look to a future normal. So what is your new normal going to be? What are you going to do on Friday nights from here on out? So you're going to have to figure out some kind of a plan so that Friday nights are not something you dread. And, and only you can decide that. Let's see. Oh, ha! now I know what that sand comment was about. Rachel said they went to the beach and there was sand all over. Well, that's what vacuum cleaners are for. And that's what Friday car and purse day is for. So now, Rachel, if you're working outside the home, you might have to wait and do that on Saturday. But that's what vacuum cleaners are for. So you can get that cleaned up just nicely. Uh, let's see. So Blue Skies is greeting people as they come in. Thank you. And so Walter says a weekly sheet wash. Brilliant. Now, let me um, bring the planner up now. Oh, let me get this comment off. And I did mention you wash the sheets every Monday with the weekly home blessing. And, you know, um, so there's that. Okay, so now I'm going to, oh, I got to get that comment off the screen. Before I, oh, fancy schmancy. Hey, I'm glad you're here. I got to find that comment so I can get it off the screen. Maybe putting up the last person that said hello will do that. Um, somebody named Rebecca is leaving. Oh. Uh, zones. Okay. There. So now I can get that off. Uh, you posted a question. Where did you post the question? Because I don't have my iPad up here, so I can't see it. So I can try to find the question. Um, hmm. Okay, here we go. So Wendy asks, what's the best way to clean the cabinets above the stove? She has grease, but she doesn't know what to use that won't take away the shine to her cabinets. I have got a wood cleaner that I use when I need to do that. It's a 
Oh, some kind of wash and glow. And then I also have a Min Wax wood cleaner that I use. The Win Max, the Min Wax, and let me put it down here, is amazing. Where did it go? There we go. So Men Wax is really amazing. So I use that to clean my cabinets. And I've got a video where I have actually cleaned my cabinets. It's an old woman. I do have a video up where I was cleaning the cabinets and the woodwork in the kitchen. I think I did that last year during spring cleaning or something like that. So I'll try to remember to link that in the description box. But I used Men Wax to do that. Now I have a new uh, wood cleaner and it's um, orange glow. And I'm upstairs in my office, so if I was downstairs, I would run to the kitchen sink and grab it. But I didn't anticipate having to have products for show and tell, so I don't have that. But it's an orange glow wood cleaner, and it gives the wood a nice citrus scent, but it really does a good cleaning, too. So I, I really like it. But the Min Wax is what I typically use, but the wood, the orange glow is a new one that I'm working. And then, of course, there's... um. English, old English cleaner, and um, oh, there's another one that I'm spacing on right now. And then Michelle at My Everyday Wife Life, hey Michelle, she says method wood for good cleaner works pretty good, but she can't find it anymore. And sometimes some of those method products are just in short supply. Meth has been trying to keep up with their inventory, but it's been an issue. Okay. And then Blue Sky says that uh, Tam that love my babies forever wants to know, do I have an, to get oil or grease stain out of clothes? I do have a video on how to get stains out of clothes. And I believe I talked about oil, but right now I don't remember what it was that I used to do that with. But it's in my um, stain removal video where I showed you how to get the stains and stuff like that out of three different types of clothing, but I'll tell you where you can find that information. There is a Rachel, a Rachel Ray video, which I watched, which was amazing about stain removal. Um, and um, there was a guy from a uh, dry cleaners, and I can't remember the name of that guy, but on that video, if you type, if you Google or go to YouTube and type in Rachel Ray stain removal, there's a guy from a dry cleaners. He was like the manager of a dry cleaner. It's a very old one in New York. And he showed the vinegar and water, the vinegar and Dawn cleaner and vinegar and some other things. And he talked about how to get out grease stains, blood stains. Uh, grass stains and those different things. And he, he was really, really kind of a smart guy because he talked about how each stain has a little bit different component that you need to address that with. And I usually have those notes in front of me when I try to talk about that. So please look for that Rachel Ray video because this guy is amazing and he has everything on there. Mick, if you could find that real quick and drop that link in here, that would be good. Let's see. Uh, and then I saw a, a question about, do I recommend a rag or a sponge? Well, Wendy depends upon what I'm doing. If I'm washing dishes, I use a sponge or a dish rag. Just depends on what the product is. But most of the time, if I'm washing dishes, I use a sponge and I use the Grove Collaborative kind of a walnut kind of a sponge. They also have some scrubbers that I use as well. When I'm cleaning, like if I'm cleaning the woodwork, like, you know, the woodwork, well, you can't see me doing that, but when I'm cleaning the woodwork like that, I will use either a rag or a Viva paper towel that is cloth-like. And then I will put the wood cleaner on the rag or the towel and clean it that way especially if it's something that i'm going to spray on you know like that and then i'll use the rag to wipe it off i don't use sponges on these kinds of things i'll use a rag 
Um, I'm trying to transition to using um, microfiber cloths uh, because, you know, you can use those, you know, you wash them up, you can use one side to kind of wash, one side to dry, that kind of thing. And they're reusable, whereas paper towels, you pretty much dispose of them once you're done for the day. So I am trying that one. So Blue Skies has dropped in the link for the um, Rachel Ray video that I wanted uh, Tam to see that talked about that. Now, Wendy, since we're talking about sponges, I need to say, how often do you change your sponge? You should change those dishwashing sponges every week because the dishwashing sponge is probably the dirtiest thing in your home because it sits there on the top of your sink. It never gets completely dry. Uh, we have food particles and different things like that. So bacteria and that kind of thing can grow in it. It's even dirtier than your toilet seat because the toilet seat is usually dry. And um, so the sponge can get pretty grody. So there's that. Um, okay. Okay. So Rachel says, don't use fabric softener on microfiber towels. Well, you know, I don't use fabric softener on any towels. When I am washing towels, I use vinegar. I use uh, either uh, cleaning vinegar or I'll just use, you know, like plain white vinegar that you use for cooking about a half a cup in the rinse cycle. Because when you use fabric softener in towels, it eventually it begins to coat the fibers of the towels and then they become stiff and they don't absorb as well. So when I wash my towels, I will use a half a cup of vinegar in the fabric softener bin as my softener. So your towels are much more pliable, much more soft and fluffy. They don't have as much uh, uh, product remaining in them and they last longer. So I don't ever use fabric softener in towels. Michelle says she puts her sponges in the dishwasher and yeah, you can do that. And they've done some research to show that and it does help a little. Some people try to put their sponges in the refrigerator to try to cut curb the growth of the bacteria. But actually they say it is best practice to change those sponges every week, just throw them out. So you wanna buy sponges that are economical enough that you can just pitch them every week. I've seen some sponges that are so broken, I'm like, how can you even use that? It's just so broken up. Change them every week for best practice. I mean, think about it. You're washing dishes, things that you're actually putting food on for your family. So change your sponges every week. Let's see. Um, so when Vamsi asks, do I use sponges to clean things? I use sponges on in the kitchen on dishes, but I have another set of sponges that I use if I'm going to actually use a sponge to actually clean something. Like if I'm washing, I don't know, a wall or something like that, or if I'm scrubbing down the bathtub, I use a sponge. But here's the thing, and you guys are going to laugh at this. I either buy the Grove Collaborative Walnut Sponges, and I'll just type that in here at the bottom. I grow collaborative walnut sponges or the Scott yellow sponges. They're yellow and they've got like a little green pad on the other side. Okay, where am I at? They have like, they're either yellow with the little green pad on the other side, the Scotch pad um, sponges. I don't know what they're called, but they're yellow with a little green scrubber pad on the other side. I use those or the Grove Collaborative Walnut Sponges for dishes. And I only use those sponges because I've taught my family. Actually, I probably trained my family that if you see a yellow sponge, that's a dish sponge and it goes in the kitchen. If you see a walnut colored sponge, that's a dish sponge and it goes in the kitchen in the sink, not in the bathroom, not in the garage not anywhere else. Now, any other color sponge, you can use anywhere outside you want, but I don't use any other color sponge in the kitchen, just the yellow and the yellow scotch sponge and, or the walnut grove sponge. Now, why is that? Well, sometimes uh, the sons or the hubby would forget, you know, it was like they, they're working on something, they grab a sponge, I'm like, wait, hold up, that's a dish sponge. So this way, there's no transfer of contamination. There's no mix up. They know yellow sponges, kitchen only. Any other color sponge is, you know, you can use it for other things. And of course, I only keep the kitchen sponges 
in the kitchen. But sometimes you might find them going under the kitchen sink looking for cleaning products to do stuff with, but they know not to get the kitchen sponges now. Uh, Rachel said she gets six sponges for a dollar. She uses a new one almost every other. That's even better. And then, um, so she's they're cheap enough that she can change them out frequently. And if she's hand washing and towel drying with that sponge, then she wants it to be clean. So a dollar a week, basically. Now, towel drying, that's a whole different story. I've got um, a set of towels that I use in the kitchen. And they're just white. Well, I've got two sets of towels that I use in the kitchen. I have a set of white dish towels and a set of white dish cloths, which I got at Target. They're just what they call bar mop towels. They are inexpensive. I bought three sets, so I've got about 18 of them. Well, there's fewer now because I've picked some over time. I only use them in the kitchen for dishes and, well, for dishes, period. When I'm washing dishes and drying dishes, things in the kitchen is what I use them for. They're white. So once I'm done using them, like if I'm done washing dishes for the day, as part of the fly lady cleaning process, one of the things you do daily is you change out your dish towel and your dish cloth every day. Depending upon what I'm doing in the kitchen, if I'm washing a lot of dishes, if it's a holiday, we've got lots of dishes and uh, that kind of thing. I might change out. I might pull out three or four dish towels to use, but that's what they're for. I've got enough to do that. And then if they um, if they get something on them, I'll try to suds it out real quick because I don't want stains on them, but sometimes you can't avoid it. And then I have a bucket that I keep in my laundry pantry that is only in the laundry pantry. I don't let it sit out in the garage because if a bucket's out in the garage, it's free reign for the hubby or the sons. If it's in the house, in the laundry pantry, it's for laundry purposes only. And I got this little red one and a little green one and I will half fill it with water and I will put in some dishwashing, uh, some laundry detergent and either some OxyClean White Revive or a little bit of bleach. And I will soak those white dish towels and dishcloths in that so I can keep them nice and white and clean. I've had them for a couple of years and they still look pretty good. Now, I also have some nicer dish towels for drying and I will get those out and they're big you know they're about 18 inches big you know they're nice big I got them from the Grove Collaborative they are very nice I get those out when I've got ladies over and we're in the kitchen and they're helping me dry dishes well I'll get those out sometimes I'll get them out and use them myself depending on what's going on but I'm careful about those because uh it's no shade on the guys that are on but sometimes the hubby and the son will just grab a towel. And what they do with towels is not always what I want done with towels. I've seen a towel or two end up in the garage when it shouldn't have been. And once it's been where it shouldn't, I don't want to use it in the kitchen again. So I keep my nice towels put away and I get those out on a daily basis. I can soak them. I can clean them. Then I get them put back up. Those white towels, whereas I really don't want those being used inappropriately either, they're cheap enough that if something happens to them, let's say hubby's helping me do dishes and he's got a pan that's really greasy or he's wiping up stuff, he'll just grab a towel and just wipe up anything. And now you've got all this black, greasy stuff on the towel. Well, I'll try to suds it out. But if I can't get it out, I'll either throw it away or I'll throw it out in the garage and then he can use it out there for stuff. So I like to keep my kitchen towels nice, neat and clean. So let's see what else. Um, So Michelle said she looked and Grove Collaborative has a method wood for good cleaner in stock. So, yeah, that's a very nice one. And I do have an, uh, have a, a link for the Grove Collaborative. I'll put it in the description box. It's not in there yet. But if you choose, like if you choose to check them out, they will give a free gift set of some products and a little caddy and some different things like that if you sign up for their program. So I will put it in the description box sometime after we're done with the show. And you can check them out if you like. They will send you your uh, cleaning products by mail. I just got a box yesterday. I don't usually talk about that, though I probably should. Uh, let's see. So um, Candy said that the uh, she's tried the vinegar and it works very well. Yes, it does. Oh. Uh, 
Wendy said she didn't know that. Wendy, I've got a video where I actually did the research to see about um, how often we should change our sponges. And, and that's the thing. For some of you that don't know, I'm a retired nurse. And so and I used to teach at the university here locally. And so different times we would have to research different things. And my students would sometimes do programs, uh, do teaching projects at the local grade schools and things like that. And one of them, they actually cultured out a few things that were common in the kitchen, like the sponge and different things like that, the handle on the door. And they found out that some of those things that we have in the kitchen are actually dirtier than the toilet seat. And then, of course, there are bona fide research articles that you can find that addresses that. But yeah, sponges should be changed uh, at least once a week. Oh, OK, let's see. No, I did not do a video on stripping. And um, one of my viewers sent me that trend and said, you should do this video on stripping. And I will. I just haven't got to it. But stripping and what she's talking about is there's a method where you soak your clo your clean clothing in a vinegar or some kind of a solution, soak them in the bathtub and all that excess product comes out. It's amazing what happens when you do that. Uh, vinegar, uh, Tam says she uses vinegar. It's her Windex. And yes, vinegar is good for quite a few things. Okay, let's see. What am I missing here? So Candy says she likes the idea of using different color sponges. She had never thought of that. I, it works for our family. So when I go to my daughter's house or someone else's house and they have different color sponges, I'm like, uh, okay, so which one of these are kitchen sponges? That kind of thing. Just because I've always only used one color for the kitchen. That way, just so nobody gets confused, like where is this sponge supposed to be? Uh, okay, let's see. You guys are talking to each other. That's fine. Rachel said she likes white towels because she can bleach them. And that's why I chose white for the kitchen. I even have white towels for my uh, cleaning. Like when I'm using rags in the bathrooms and other places, but it's a different kind. It has a different nap, a different texture. So I know which ones are which. And I don't wash the white cleaning towels with the white dish towels. I wash those white dish towels and dish cloth by themselves. I don't wash them with anything else. Whereas the other towels that we use to shower with those kind of things, I can wash those with the sheets, but I don't wash anything with my white dish towels. Okay. Oh, sorry, you didn't get the notification. I'm sorry. So um, Dawn says she soaks her sponges in bleach water. Now, that is actually a pretty good practice to soak them in bleach water to kind of help get some of the germs out of them. It won't get rid of all of them, but it's certainly get rid of some of them. So, yeah, that's actually a pretty good practice. So, yeah, you're OK with that. I'm not they're not germ free, but they're certainly probably 75 to 80 percent uh, better than um, not soaking them at all. So that's a great practice to do. I saw something about that as well. So yeah, that's a great practice to do. Okay. So um, Libby is using old kitchen towels or microfiber towels. What are you using them for, Libby? If you're using them to wash, uh, to wash things with, yeah, that's fine. Whatever you want to wash like other places with is fine. Um, to clean with that kind of thing, either one of those are fine. I think there's just a trend right now for microfiber towels. And then some people say microfiber towels are better than others. I haven't used microfiber towels a lot. I'm just starting to move to using them because I had a little problem with the texture of them. And just to tell you something a little funny, my little niece, Mickey's little granddaughter, uh, Zaria, was here one day and she was playing cleanup and she wanted a rag to wash something. So I gave her a microfiber towel. She went like this and threw it down. She wanted another towel. She didn't like the feel of the microfiber towel. You know, you've got the two sides. So I had to give her just a, like a regular like terry cloth towel. But, you know, there's a texture thing with those. I'm learning to get to those. Hey, Patricia, I haven't talked to you for a while. Good to have you with me today. Uh, let's see.
So, Michelle, you're absolutely right. We wouldn't have to strip our laundry if we didn't use fabric softener. There's so much product residual that remains in clothing, so there may be some in all of it. But laundry stripping, even though it's it's become something that we've heard about recently and it's trended, I guess like dry cleaners and hotels and people that like manage large amounts of laundry, they've known about that all the time, all along. So they've been doing stuff with that. Uh So um, Christy says, I must live close to Bloomington. No, I don't live in Bl close to Bloomington. I went to school in Bloomington for, um, I don't, I, okay. I went to undergrad, my first year of undergrad was at IU in Bloomington. And then I had to go to Indianapolis to the med center for my last three years of undergrad school. So that's why you saw some of my Indiana University stuff. And then you moved to North Carolina five years ago. Hey, a fellow Hoosier, all right. Uh, a lot of people say fabric softener is not a good thing. Uh, let's see. Okay, for cleaning cabinets, yes. Old kitchen towels, uh, any kind of thing. And you know, Libby, I used to use those waffle weave cloths when we were, I don't like the feel of them though. I don't use the waffle, well, take that back. The waffle weave dishcloths, I used to use a lot. When we were at home, we used waffle weave dishcloths. And if, if I'm thinking about the same kind you're talking about, and then there's a kind of dishcloth that has some kind of a little, I don't know, I don't want to say wire, but some kind of little gauzy scrubber on the other side. I don't like those. But waffle weaves are cheap and they're, they're good for dishes and they're cheap. You can bleach them and they're cheap enough. You can have lots of them. So, yes, I, we used to use waffle weave cloths at home all the time. You know, I have not heard that fabric softener is toxic, so I can't speak to that. But I do know that fabric softener can collect in the clothing and uh, make your towels stiffer and less absorbent. So that's why I no longer use it. So I can't say that it's toxic. Other people may say that, but I don't have the science to say that because I've not approached it from that perspective. But it does end up with residual product in your towels, which is why I've made the transition to only using vinegar in my fabric softener bin. For towels, I do use fabric softener in some of my other clothing, depending on what it is. Uh, have I ever boiled the washcloths, cleaning cloths, or kitchen towels? No, I have not. What I do is I will soak them in either bleach water or I'll use a sanitizer or something like that. I've not boiled them. I can't figure out why we would need to. Now, they used to boil clothing long time ago as part of their way of cleaning it, but we've got better methods now, so I don't do that. I'll use bleach or I will use like OxyClean White Revive. I might use some borax or something like that. Okay. Oh, you know what? Um, Rachel said her mom crochets her dishcloths and there was a lady that was on one day and I was going to order some crochet dishcloths from her. I forgot to do it. I have to find her email because I wanted to try them. I heard crochet dishcloths are amazing and I did want to try them. Okay, so let me get back to showing my planner. I've answered a few questions now. I was supposed to show the planner and I'm going to check just one more time to see if this stupid video render no for some reason um it didn't come up at all I, I don't know what happened with it so now i'm going to go back to showing the planner and i'm going to go through it very slowly okay so here we are okay here we are so this is the first week of of march and we're in zone one. And so zone one is the first week of that month. And so this is the week of March. So on Monday, as I mentioned earlier, is the weekly home blessing. And there's some other things that I'm doing along in here. And I put what I'm having for dinner over here. Tuesday is my free day. But as I said earlier, sometimes I'm too tired to do anything else on Tuesday. I mean, to, uh, on Monday after I get the weekly home blessing done. 
So I might move a task to Tuesday. And since this is zone one, we're supposed to choose four things in the um, that zone to work on. And zone one is the entryway, the dining room, the front porch, the patio, um, and the hallway. Those are the things in zone one. So I chose four things that I was going to work on, and then I plotted them on the calendar. So I didn't put an extra thing here on Monday because I'm usually tired and I had a video that I had to get up. Tuesday is my free day. So other than my daily swish and swipe, I don't have anything that I have to do. But since I know that I didn't get any zone work done on Monday, I moved, I put my decluttering the pot on the porch on my free day. And then you can see over on this side, I've got some personal appointments. So house stuff is over here. And then personal appointments and that kind of thing is over here. And then on Wednesday, oh, sorry, I'm making you guys seasick. So then on Wednesday is my plan day and also clean my refrigerator, order my groceries. So I put it on like that. And if I've got other things to do, I put it on the other side. And then Thursday is errand day and grocery order. So I didn't put any uh, zone work to do over here. And then I've got other stuff over here that I'm working on. So now it's Friday and you can see my car and purse day. You can see that my zone work is going to be sweeping the porch and organizing the pots. And then Saturday is family fun day. And then I'm going to hang the spring wreath on the door and hang some pictures in the hall. So those are the four things that I picked to do for my zone for that week. Because you only have to do four things in the zone that week, and they shouldn't take you more than 15, 20 minutes at the most to do. Now, just because I want to get something done, like what I've got um, to, or, to declutter the pots on the porch, well, that might actually take me more than 15 minutes, might take me 20 or 30, but I'll do that one thing and then have that done. And then on the next day, um, when I work, like out on the porch, then maybe it might include actually sweeping all the porch down now, getting all the dirt swept off because I've been fooling around with the pots and now I've got dirt out there. And then when I'm getting ready for spring, then I will organize the pots, which means I will set them out on the porch where I want them to go. Once I know where they're going to go on the porch and in front of the porch and in the front yard, I know what kind of flowers or plants to buy to put in them, to put in them. So that's why I will um, organize the pots on the porch. That way I know, you know, like what I need to do. And then remember for you um, homemakers who work outside of the home, some of the stuff that I put on during the week, I'm going to have to do, you're going to have to do on the weekend. So there's that. Uh, let's see. And, uh, oh, and then down here, at the bottom is where I'll put in my focus for the week. And then if I've got some video ideas, you know, I'll put those right there. So that's the first week. And I'll try to plot out, pick the four things that I'm going to do that week. Either I'll plot the whole thing out like in one day on a Sunday night or each Sunday night. Or Sunday afternoon, you know, once things are quiet, I'll sit down and I'll get my planner out and I'll think about, okay, what zone is it this week? And uh, next week it'll be zone two. And so I've got like zone two written up here. And then zone two is the kitchen. So then I'll ask myself, what are the four things that needs doing in the kitchen? And then I will plot those out on the planner. So for example... You see, I've got Monday, weekly home blessing, and I didn't put anything else to do there. Tuesday is my free day, but I'm also, as part of my zone two, which is kitchen, I'm going to declutter and organize my cookbook cabinet. Wednesday, as you already know, is my plan day. And on that day, I will clean the refrigerator, do my grocery order, but the zone work is going to be cleaning the oven hood and the grates. I've already got stuff out to clean the fridge, so I'm going to clean the oven hood and the grate that day. And then on Thursday 
is errand day. And on that day, I'm going to clean the dishwasher. And then you can kind of see over here what are some of the standing appointments that I have. So I'll just go ahead in and write in my scheduled appointments that I have every Monday. I got a two o'clock appointment with someone named Michelle. And then on, I got a video that needs to deploy. Now write that in. On Tuesday, I've got standing appointments. On Wednesday, I've got a standing appointment. And on Thursday, I got TNT Live. That's my standing appointment with you guys. I had a hair appointment and I have a sister that I want to try to connect with. And then on Friday, as you can see, car and purse day. Oops. Car and purse day. Saturday is family fun day. And then the 14th, which is a Sunday, is also when daylight saving time switches. So now that's a seasonal thing. Every time the time changes is your reminder to check your smoke detector. Do you need to replace the batteries or do you need to replace the smoke detector? Now, technically, you should be testing the smoke detector weekly or monthly just to make sure everything is going okay. But when it's daylight savings time or when your time changes, it's your big reminder. OK, get up there. Do I need to replace the batteries? Is it the kind that you can change the batteries or is it been long enough now? You just need to change the smoke detector. So I'll put those things on the planner to help me remember what to do. And then as far as errands go, if I have a lot of errands to run on a particular day, I'll put them down on this little note and then I'll have it here in my planner and I tuck it up small enough so that it fits in there and it closes it up. So there's that. Um, and then I don't know what movie we're going to watch next week, but I just know we're going to watch a movie. And then as you can see, so the, the, the routine is pretty much the same, but the biggest thing is that you're choosing the items you want to work on in your home. Now, and just to give you another example, so now the next week is going to be zone three. Zone three is um, the master bathroom. No, zone three is the main bathroom and one other room. So you see on Monday, I'm doing my weekly home blessing. And then I'm going to deep clean the toilet bowl in the main bath, which is the hall bath that everyone uses when they come into the house. You can see over on the right side, I've got personal appointments coming up. Um, on Tuesday, my free day, I'm going to clean under the bathroom sink in that same main bathroom. And then I've got other appointments on the other side. On Wednesday, you see, I'm going to, you know, my usual plan day, clean the fridge, that kind of thing. But I'm also going to clean under the bathroom sink in the upstairs bathroom. Just one, not both, just one. And then um, if I have any errands to do, I'm going to do that. And then the zone cleaning is going to be the office closet. Because remember, you do the main bathroom and one other room that's not... Um, that's not like the kitchen or the dining room or the living area. And then I've got other appointments on the other side, which includes my appointment with you for TNT Live. And then on Friday, my zone cleaning is going to be the office closet because in case I'm not done, I've got another day for that. And then you can see that it's the first day of spring and family fun day. I found these really cute stickers with this young black woman on it. And I don't use a lot of stickers, but those were just so cute. I just couldn't resist them. Looks like we got a new watcher on named uh, Clothes Scarlet. Well, hello, Clothes Scarlet. Uh, it's good to have you here. Everyone say hello to Scarlet. It's good to have you, have you with us. And now we're on into, I'm explaining the different zones and how I use my planner for that. So now we're into zone four, which is the fourth week of the month. And the zone four is the master bedroom, master bedroom closet, master bedroom bathroom, those kinds of things. If you don't have a bathroom in your master bedroom, you don't have to worry about it. So you see, I'm doing my usual stuff. But I'm going to work on the master bedroom closet, the left side. On Tuesday, I'm going to do the right side of the closet. On Wednesday, I'm going to do the closet floor. And then on Thursday, if there's still stuff to do in the closet floor, I'll do that. And then on Friday, 
I'm going to work in my husband's t-shirt drawer. His t-shirt drawer is all a mess. He is the bane of my existence in that regard. I will fold him out pretty neatly, get everything all put away. And then he goes tearing through them looking for one particular shirt. So I'm looking for some organizers that I want to use to take care of that. And we'll see how that works. I started to looking at those things today. And so if I, when I find some things, I'll let you know. And then there is a page called Notes and Ramblings where I can put notes of things that I'm concerned about. And I want to work in my craft closet. It needs a major declutter and organization. So I know I want to get that done, but I'm not sure when. So I'll just kind of start plotting out a plan for that on that page. And then this is one of the things I really like about this planner is that there's also the plan so I can do a plan for the month and then a focus for the month like right there and then there's a daily habit tracker and so one of the things that I try to do every day is yoga but I didn't do yoga today or yesterday but I want to make sure I stay on top of my zones and so I got zones done on Monday and Tuesday but I didn't feel well yesterday and I didn't have time to get to my zone cleaning today and then I need to do some digital cleanup on my email and I haven't got to that yet. So I put those on here so that I can look for those and try to do those every day. Now, someone asked me what planner was I using and I forgot to put that in, but I use the Inkwell Press Productivity Planner. That's what I use. I've used it for the last four or five years. And I absolutely love it because it just has so many different pieces to help me organize my life and um, my house. So one of the things I really like about it is this mission page. Let me get that off of there so you can see. And so this is the mission board for April and I've kind of got it started. And one of the things I always do is put on a picture of me and the hubby just to remind me, you know, that that should be my priority focus. And this is just a little character that we had done. And then I'll just write in the different things that, you know, we have going on or that I want to focus on for the month. And for April, I want to work on getting my garage cleaned up. So I've got the great garage cleanup listed on there for April. But now let me show you something else. This is important. Mickey Blue Skies used to say she would call me in the morning at six o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock in the morning when she was a little girl. And she would say, but Denise, it's important because my mom would get after her about calling people so early. So this is important. So notice that at the top of the page, where before I had written zone, it now says project. Because when you're doing projects, you don't do zone work. And when you're working on a project, you work on the project in 30 minute pieces so that you can get it done. And you set a start date and you set a finish date. And then you look at the project at how many different pieces it might be. You break them up into the little pieces. And then you only work on the project four days a week for 30 minutes at a time. And so you plot out on your calendar how many days it's going to take you to get that project done, working four days a week for 30 minutes at a time so that you know your start date and you know your end date. And so then, so on this planner, I'll just, I just got like project right there. And then on Monday the 29th, I'm going to start garage and I just put garage. And then so you just see each day I've just got garage there just as a reminder and then other standing appointments in there. And then Saturday, I don't have to work on the garage because it's my family fun day. But if I choose to, I can, especially if I wanted to work more and get it done. And then I got the same thing done like here. So that's how you would do when you're working on a project. So you don't. Um, and I do have specific pieces for that. And I can show you that just a second. Let me show you. I have that in a different planner. This is my control journal. And um, I did have like an Inkwell Press A5 in this, but which is a smaller size planner. But um, I put, I made this into my control journal. And so here's what I've got my various routines in here. So like here's my morning routine. 
and all the things that I would do as part of the morning routine, which includes workout, brush my teeth, wash my face, moisturize before breakfast meds, dress to shoes, which I usually dress to gym shoes. Well, I don't put on shoes first thing because I come downstairs and do yoga. Then when I'm done with my yoga, I put on some slippers. And then um, put away, I'll unload the dishwasher, make breakfast, and then take my meds that I have to take with breakfast, review my planner so I can see what I got to do for the day, clean up after breakfast, wipe out the sink, you know, my daily swish and swipe, that kind of thing, fill the bird feeders, uh, water my flowers if they're outside or inside, start the laundry, and then review my checklist to make sure I got everything done. And you do a load of laundry every day. You do a load of laundry every day. You do a load of laundry every day. One medium to small load of laundry every day. Now, it's just two of us here, me and the hubby. If I do laundry Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, my laundry is usually done in the winter time. Well, it's coming on spring and he just got his new boat today. And so that means fishing usually starts the first week of April. And then laundry kicks up. He can generate enough laundry for a two-year-old once fishing season starts and then it's summer because of the kind of work and things he's doing outside. So my laundry increases. So then it might be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday laundry day. Might have to do uh, two loads in one day. But Monday through Friday are the days I do laundry. Weekends, I don't have to do that. For those of you with a family, you might need to do two loads of laundry a day. If you're working outside the home, throw a load in before you go to bed, put it in the dryer when you get up. Or throw a load in in the morning when you go to work, throw it in the dryer when you get back, that kind of thing. Or you might need to do, you know, a couple or three loads on the weekend. But if you try to get one load done every day and get your uh, families involved to a certain degree when you can. But and remember, the laundry is not done. And let me just write that down. And I'll talk about the apron store in a minute. The laundry is not done until it. Until it is folded and put away. Um. Where is it? There it is. And I'll answer that apron question in just a minute. The laundry is not done until it is folded and put away. Folded and in the basket doesn't count. Folded on the counter doesn't count. Now, if you've got little ones and they're big enough to carry the laundry upstairs and put it in their drawer, you can fold it up and say, okay, here's Susie, put yours away. Bobby, put yours away. Jimmy, put yours away. And they put them where you tell them to put them. Or you take them up and you put them in the drawer yourself. But the laundry is not done until it's folded and put away. And as Fly Lady Cat says, a load a day keeps Mount Washmore away. If you fold it up every day and put it away, it keeps Mount Foldmore away. There's nothing worse than having clean clothes in a basket. And then they get all wrinkled up in the basket. And then kids are pulling them out, trying to find something. Next thing you know, they're on the floor. And you're washing clean laundry again because it was all over the floor. So a load a day, every day, just helps you stay on top of things. If you've got a lot of little ones, you're going to have more laundry to do than the others. You may need to do three loads a day. It's, you just have to figure it out. So plot it out on your planner what days you're going to do laundry. For example, I do laundry Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday usually. When my husband was working and he just, you know, quit his job related to COVID, he had to wear white shirts, you know, like white, white shirts to work with. He was an usher at the Coliseum. So if you've ever been like to a play or something like that, you know, the guys that show you around. But when he retired, he started doing that. So he had to wear white shirts and red jackets, that kind of thing. Well, I'm old school. My whites had to be bright white. So I worked at having those shirts bright white. So on Mondays, when I did the weekly home blessing, I would strip the bed and I would wash the sheets and the towels. And I would also do a load of his white shirts so that he would have white shirts for the week. And then on Tuesdays, I did a load of colored clothes. On Wednesday, I did another load of clothes or something like that. But I either I'm doing like you know, colored clothes or light colored clothes and underwear and those kinds of things. But Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, I did my laundry. 
And I'm old school, so I would sort them into different piles. I know today um, the younger homemakers, if they're like fabrics, like colors, they throw them all in together. Because that's what my son does, my youngest son. He does the laundry at his house. And if the colors, he throws like everything in together. Like I'm like, no, I got to sort that kind of thing. But that's just me. Okay, now, um, one more question, and then I'll try to find the question that Mickey Blue Sky said that she um, had. And then I'll talk about, I'll go back and look at questions. So John J, hey John, I'm glad you like it. I, I'm glad you like it and you guys stuck with me today because I was gonna be so high tech. I All this stuff that I was telling you about my planner, I filmed. And then I was going to pull it up just like I pull on these other videos and show it to you and talk to you about the different things. And somehow when it was uploading it, I hit something and it just disappeared. So now it is still uploading on YouTube. I don't know what's going on. So I'll just have to to find out about it, figure it out later. But so Carolyn says she's interested in the apron store. So I've been working on the apron store all this month and last month, you know, so the name of the store is Apron Diva and uh, Mickey Blue Skies. If you could drop in the link that they can sign up on to get information. So the name of the store is Apron Diva and I am the Apron Diva because you guys know I love to wear aprons. I just love pretty aprons for different things. And I'll have like I might be in the yard working and I have on one kind of apron and something else for in the house or whatever. But. So I'm ordering aprons in and then I'm also going to have aprons that we're going to make. And I'm going to have two different, well, three different collections in my apron shop. One of them I'm calling the um, June collection and it's going to be uh, some of the aprons that you kind of see that I wear. Um, you know, some of them are just a little bit of retro, but or aprons that I've ordered in. And then I'm going to have the pearl collection where I'm going to have some really nice aprons that are handmade. And I'm going to be, you know, just very, very retro in some of those. And then I'm going to have some what I call my farmhouse collection that are just, you know, more um, just a little bit more rustic, but just fun. And, you know, that kind of farmhouse stuff is just so cute right now. But I'm working on it. And um, so I hope to launch the shop the middle of April, right? You guys can actually come on and order product, that kind of thing. I may have a way to do pre-orders. Not sure yet because the Blue Skies is helping me sort some of that out. But when you actually want to purchase product, like to, 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 to buy product, I'm going to have like, you know, you'll go through, you'll click on a link and it'll take you to my shopping cart or Shopify or whatever, and then you'll order it that way because then that way can help me stay on top of inventory. It's a way to take money and all that kind of stuff that just kind of helps keep everything clean. So that's what I am working on. So I am so excited. And I was at the fabric store today choosing some really nice fabric for some of the aprons. And after I left there, I stopped by Blue Sky's home. She was not expecting me. And I just dropped in on her because I was just so excited that I just wanted her to show her what I had gotten today and just kind of tell her some stuff. So, okay. So she put in big letters. I posted a question, answer it. So let me go back and find the question. Um, let's see. Uh, question, question, question. Tam, I'll come back with the main spaces in a minute, but let me find the question because uh, I need to get it answered. Oh, is this the question? Oh, okay. Here it is. June Goodman asks, when do I fit in ironing, mending, and baking? First of all, I rarely iron. I rarely iron. And I have to tell you what, you guys, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. When I was growing up, you know, my mom was a 1950s housewife. So you ironed everything, which meant that we learned how to iron. I have four sisters. So Blue Skies is my baby sister, even though she sometimes thinks she's the boss of me. She is not. But 
We had to iron everything. We ironed not only our clothes, but we had to iron our dad's clothes. We ironed his undershirts, his boxer shorts, everything. We ironed tablecloths. We ironed sheets. We had to iron everything. So when I got married and set up my household, I ironed some things. And then one day, and you know, I worked, the honey worked, you know, off and on. And I remember thinking in, in our old house, I was in the kitchen ironing. No, we had a, a laundry room in that house. But I remember I was ironing. Then I thought, wait a minute. I'm walking out this door every day, just like he is. Why am I doing all the ironing? And he ironed his own clothes when we were in college because his mom taught him how to iron. So I thought he can iron his own clothes. So I stopped ironing and he ironed his own clothes. So I don't iron as a rule. With my uniforms and stuff like that, when I was a young nurse, I had to iron those. But if I could get them out of the dryer quick enough, hang them up and, and so that they weren't wrinkled, I, I didn't have to iron those. And then, you know, most of the clothing today is pretty much wrinkle free if you get it out of the dryer right away. I have my hangers ready. I get that stuff out. I get it hung up. I don't have to iron. Now, I do have to iron my aprons because most aprons are 100 percent cotton. I have two or three. I have two or three that when I throw them in the wash and bring them out of the dryer, they're just as nice as when they went in. I can just hang them up and they're fine. But all the rest I have to iron. So I do iron my apron. So. Let's say if I iron my apron, say on a Monday or on a Tuesday, I might iron the aprons then. Um, I know it's my free day, but sometimes, you know, like I'm at a point now that when I get all the stuff done on Monday for weekly home blessing, or I may not be able to get it all done. I may not have the energy to get it all done on Monday, so I may split it up and do some of it on Tuesday. So I will iron on Tuesday. As far as mending, I don't usually have any. Uh, I might have a button or two to sew on. But I really don't have much mending to do, but you can just plan on your calendar when you're going to do that. Friday, which is car and purse day, would be a good day to do mending because, you know, once you clean out your purse, clean out your car, there's no other big thing to do. Um, and, you know, you can move your zone work to Tuesday or you could do your mending on Tuesday because that's not in zones and it's not weekly cleaning. So Tuesday could be a good day to do mending and ironing. And then baking also. What you want to do is look at what day do you have the most stuff on. And so when I'm looking at my planner and I'm looking at my weekly stuff, so like on Wednesday, every Wednesday I'm going to clean the fridge. Well, most days it's just wiping it out if there's any little spills or something like that. And it doesn't take very long. So but I'm ordering the groceries, which takes some time and I'm paying my bills and all those kinds of things. So I don't probably wouldn't want to do those things on Wednesday. So my best day to add in ironing or mending is going to be Tuesdays. Now, as far as baking, whatever I'm going to do in the house, I like to have done by noon. So I'm going to pretty much have my daily cleaning and my uh, zone work done by noon, which means I could bake in the afternoon should I choose to do that. But definitely now if I'm baking bread, I might want to like, and I've only baked bread a few times, I might want to start it early in the morning, you know, get it set so I can have it sitting out rising or whatever. So I can do that first thing, put it on after I get the laundry started, get the bread started, and then I can do some other things. But I don't bake that way kind of often either. So there's that. Um, now, let me see if I missed something else up here. Okay, let's see if I got everything. Okay. So now, uh, Bamsey asked if I have a dishwasher, and I do. When I was at home with my uh, young ones, um, we didn't have a dishwasher. And my daughter used to say, I wish we had a dishwasher. And I said, I have three. Y'all. And they wash the dishes, you know, most of the time. And um, and I know like Dalutsu, I know she doesn't have a dishwasher. So she's the dishwashing diva in her home. And if you don't have a dishwasher, like Blue Skies doesn't have a dishwasher, you're the dishwasher. And you just, I'm the dishwasher diva. And um, Fly Lady Cat talks about being the dishwashing diva. You guys have to find her video and look at that. Um, it is just so funny, but she talks about doing the dishes and using this little Southern accent. And she says, when people are asking you, can you do something? She's like, I'm doing the dishes. You know, she just, it's just so cute. But there's that. Um, 
Tam, I love my babies forever, says it's planner time. Yes, you do need a good planner. I like the Inkwell Press uh, 360 because it works for me, but you might like something else. So, you know, that you just need to find what works for you. Patricia says she's loving the conversation. I'm glad of that. Um, Janine said her granny used to have a ringer type washer and it cleaned the clothes really well. Let me guys tell you something. You guys can tell I am not a spring chicken. My mom used to have a ringer type washer. As a matter of fact, I remember there was a girl in our neighborhood that got her arm caught in a ringer washer and her arm got amputated like up to here because it got caught in that ringer washer. And yeah, they wash clothes pretty good. So I already talked about when I fit in ironing, mending, and baking. If I'm going to do ironing, I'll do it on Tuesday or sometimes on Friday. But I don't iron much. And even the hubby's white shirts, I took care of those puppies. And I mean, I mean, as soon as the dryer stopped, I got them right out. And I would have the hangers right there and just hang them right up. And sometimes I might even take them out before they were completely dry, just so they'd be just a little bit more, you know, stiff. And then he would, if he felt like they needed to touch up, because he liked to put starch in things sometimes, and he can do that. Yeah, now several people are saying they like the fact that there's a free day schedule. And you know, Fly Lady planned that. She planned Tuesday as a free day. But if Tuesday's not good for you, you can move that free day anywhere you want. Maybe you want that free day to be moved to Friday. So you've got like a three day weekend, whatever. You get to decide to make how this system works. And I know Michelle at My Everyday Wife Life kind of quasi uses the fly lady system. She said it was just a little bit confusing. So she tweaked it to make it work for her. Tweak it to make it work for you. Just don't reinvent the wheel. You got good bones there. Take what works and leave the rest. Okay, so uh, this is a weekly monthly planner. So where do we find the info on all the zones? Um, I will put something on the community tab about that, Tam. I saw where you asked if I can do that. So I will put something about the zones on there. Um, and I did not write out that note, but zone one is the, um, I did write it in the bottom somewhere, but zone one is the entryway, the dining room. Because in, in, in so many of today's modern houses, like, you know, my daughter's house and my niece's homes, when you come in the front door, which is the entryway, you got like a little hallway, you got a little foyer, you know, you got my somewhere going upstairs. And then usually over to the left is their dining room. So um, my living room is right off my entryway and my dining room is somewhere else. But in so many of today's houses, the dining room is right there. So that's why zone one, which is the first week of the month is entryway, dining room, well, entryway, dining room, front porch, back door, you know, those uh, doorways that enter your home, those things that lead up to your home. So like my front porch, my front walkway, all that's part of my entryway. And then my hallway, got steps right there. And then the dining room, which is not right off the off there, but I just, you know, do the dining room as part of that because that's what's on the list. And then on Tuesday, she put in the free day, but I could move the living room to zone one and put the dining room with you know, somewhere else, if I chose to, you can move it around to make it work for you. Or if there's other cleaning systems that you've found that you like, use those, but plot them out on your planner so that you know when you're going to do what and when. I was looking at Michelle's channel the other day at My Everyday Wife Life, and she was uh, doing some cleaning, and she has a little printable that she's made up to kind of show the different things that she's going to do every day too, and she's tweaked the Fly Lady system to make it work for her. I don't have any printables, but Michelle's got some really cute ones. But um, Tam, I will put this information in the on the community tab so that you guys can find it. Okay, let's see. And and this is what Candy asked if I could put the suggestions on the community tab for setting up the zones, and I'll do that. I'll do that. Uh, let 
So Michelle says when she's cooking dinner, one of the things that she does is she will clean out one drawer while she's cooking dinner. And so by the end of the week, she's cleaned out seven drawers and that's a win-win for everyone. That's a great idea. So on your planner, Michelle, you could put Sunday drawer one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then just kind of check them off as you get them done. And I like your little checklist because you can check things off and see your accomplishments, that kind of thing. Uh, so Christy is going to write in her planner about checking the batteries on that um, smoke detector or smoke alarm. Put that down in your calendar for when time changes as a seasonal thing so that you don't forget to do that. Uh, Jordan T. Oh, Jordan, thank you. She said she's so helpful. She loves absorbing all of this knowledge and organization for her future home and family. Now, Jordan, I am so glad you're here. Now, here's the thing I want you to think about. You made the comment about your future home and family. Well, you currently have a home and probably a family that you are now living with. So you can begin to practice some habits now. For example, if you're the young person in your home, you've got a mom and she's pretty much got things or, you know, dad or whoever is managing the home. They probably have a system of different things that they the way they want things done. But you could begin to set up a routine for yourself. So you could begin to think about, OK, so, you know, like laundry on certain days and 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 you could set up zones for there's probably things you have to help do in your current home. And so you could create some zones for that or think about the zones that are already established and just work within those zones in your current home for whatever your chores are. And one of my granddaughters who can be very scattered sometimes when she like she can be overwhelmed with a lot going on. And so sometimes her room can just like get out of control. So I helped her to set up zones in her room so that she can like do a zone each day or each week to kind of stay on top of things. And one of the things that Fly Lady Cat says, every room has a shiny sink. And so the whole premise of the Fly Lady system is the shiny sink. It starts with shining your sink in the kitchen where we spend so much of our time. But if you shine that sink in the kitchen, clean everything up, and then when you go to bed at night, you leave out a fresh dishcloth and a fresh dish towel. When you come down in the morning, you can just go, ah, kitchen's beautiful. You don't have to worry about cleaning anything up before you can make breakfast. You unload the dishwasher, put the dishes away. So now your um, a dishwasher is ready to receive dirty dishes throughout the day. Or if you don't have a dishwasher, you can either wash them up right away, put them away or rinse them off and get one of those little basins that, you know, those old fashioned dish pans we used to use. Set that under your sink and then just kind of rinse the dishes off and just set them in that dish pan under the sink so that when you're ready to wash them, you can. That way you don't have dirty dishes in the sink or sitting on the counter. Now, that means if you're going to sit them under the sink, you're going to have to have space under there to do that. So that's something to think about. So but just kind of plan right now how you want your future to be and begin putting in some of those routines now. So when I was talking about my granddaughter and her help to set up zones in her room, the bed was her sink. The bed is the shiny sink. So in the bedroom, if the bed is messy, everything else looks messy. So if you make your bed every morning, that helps get rid of some of that clutter and some of that visual clutter and disorganization. That's your shiny sink. So that helps you right there. And then maybe zone two, because she had like the crafts and all kinds of things. So zone two might be the dresser. So on Monday, you know, you maybe strip the bed, do your sheets and all that kind of thing, wash your towels, because you're probably doing your own laundry. So you could do that on Monday. And then even though you make your bed every day and then on Tuesday could be your free day. But on Wednesday, zone one could be you clean off your dresser, you know, the dresser with your mirror, your vanity or whatever, get that organized. Maybe another day could be another piece of furniture that you have in your room that you might set things on, a desk or something like that, a closet, a bathroom, whatever. But you plan, look at where you live, the space you live in now that you're responsible for and um, plot on your, on a list, like, you know, just get out, you know, a little notepad and then just kind of write down what are the different areas in your room and assign a zone to them and, or a number to them. 
So if looking at the fly lady cleaning system and what's in those zones, well, assign a zone to those and you work on those areas each week. And that way you can kind of stay on top of things and it's building the kind of habits that you do want for your future home. The other thing you want to do is you want to talk to your partner so that when you do set up your own home and you're doing home making and home keeping, you want to get them involved right away in helping you keep the home. Now, if you're going to be a stay at home wife and a stay at home mom, then they're not going to be as involved or as engaged in keeping the home as you'll be. But you still need to have a conversation about what's going on and what needs to happen. If you're both working outside the home, then you're going to want to talk about shared responsibilities, that kind of thing. OK, so now let's see. Um, Hi, Daluzu. Good to have you with us as well. And I already spoke to Scarlett. Uh, I think Blue Skies, I got the question. Let's see what else. And then uh, Tam wrote down the um, areas that I put down. Zone one is the main space. Porch. In, no, I'll, I'll put it in there again because it's just this is off just a little bit, but I'll put it on there again. But pretty close. Zone one, porch, entryway, hallway, dining room. Zone two, kitchen. Zone three, master bathroom, or rather main bathroom and another space. And the main bathroom is probably the hall bathroom, the one that everybody uses when they come in the house. And then another space like your office, your craft room, uh, could be a kid's room or something like that. Zone four is your master bedroom, master bathroom and master closet, that kind of thing. And then zone five, which I forgot to mention, is the living room, family room, um, that area there. And you actually do get to all five of the zones uh, from you do get to all five of the zones. Sometimes there's five weeks in a, in a month. But one thing I forgot to say is sometimes you might only have one or two days in a zone for a month. Like, for example, um, for March, March started on Monday. Well, zone five would have been um, Sunday, uh, Sunday, February 28th. That would have been zone five. That means you wouldn't work in zone five that week. Well, not zone five because February doesn't have that many days. But in another month, uh, let me see. But in another month, it could be that the uh, 30th and the 31st, which would be, you know, the probably the end of the month. And that would be week five. That would be zone five. You would only have two days that month in zone five and you don't do zone work on Sunday. So that means you only have one day for zone work, which would be Monday. And then on the first would be zone one for the next month. And I know that's confusing, but we can talk about it more another time to kind of get you guys there. But uh, let's see. Ha! Huh? Um, now, Walter Aguilar, what I want you to tell me is this. I want to know if it's Walter that's on here or if it's the young lady in the picture that's on here. If it's the young lady in the picture, please tell us your name so that I don't call you Walter. We like to know each other's names over here just because, you know, we're forming a nice little community. So, you know, I'm a little informal, but that's the way we are on the TNT Live. You know, it's, it's, we're a community. We're a group that supports and loves one another. I'm trying to empower women. And well, I'm trying to empower homemakers, period. So men, women, whatever, I'm trying to share the knowledge that I have. So is this Walter or is this the young lady in the picture? And I am so glad my apron video inspired you to buy ones. I absolutely love aprons. I just feel so feminine when I wear them. And it's just all good in that regard. And, and then I will have a, a set of men's aprons in the shop when I launch. And, and Christy, I will be selling them. And I think I did already mention that. I just kind of backed up now. And Jordan said she likes that information. And let's see. And now Christy said she doesn't load every day except on weekends. And that works fine. If you're a stay at home mom or stay at home wife, you can get that done. But the wives or the homemakers that are working outside the home, they may not be able to get all that laundry done unless they do a couple loads a week. And you might need to do three loads a week. But if you're working outside the home, that might be kind of tough. 
going in and out. So you might have to do a load a day and then spend some of the Saturday working on some. Uh, Hustle Hard Mom, that's Rena. She said she loves setting time frames for large projects. And that way you don't get burned out. And I'm going to actually do a video where I show you how I set my planner up for that. But when I do that video, it's going to come out right. It's not going to be one that I was just trying to do real quick and just so I can just kind of walk you guys through some stuff. But I don't know what happened. And actually, the video was uploading and I accidentally hit the mouse. And I don't know where the mouse went to because everything disappeared off the screen. And I was like, what? And so by the time I was able to pull things back up, the video wasn't doing right. So that's why we ended up not being able to, to use it. So Dalutsu does a load every day. And I think Dalutsu told me she lives in, is it Nigeria? Um, but she, do, she does live in a different country. And so because of availability of water, she washes dishes by hand and she does laundry by hand. So load a day is gonna be important. And then you probably hang it out to dry, which is really good to help with, you know, killing bacteria and that kind of thing. And then the laundry smells so fresh. So in the summertime, when it's nice and warm, I will hang things out to dry. I even have a video where I was hanging clothes out on the line. I just love the way they smell when they hang out. Now, when the pollen count gets crazy and everybody's hay fever is up, then I don't hang things out because I don't want the pollen settling on the clothing and then driving everybody's allergies crazy. And then my aprons aren't available yet, Evelyn. I think I've already answered that. They're going to be available um, hopefully by the middle of April because the plan is to launch the middle of April. So if people want to order them for Mother's Day, they can. Uh, and now Sylvia said that she likes the concept and she started to do that. I'm not sure which concept we're talking about there. Now, uh, Tam says, Tam at I Love My Babies Forever, she says that her husband says that too, and she hates putting it away. So, you know, Tam, if I'm not correct, Sam, you have four children, so your kids can help you do that. Um, and what they can help you do is like on laundry day, once you get it done, get the laundry folded up, and they say, okay, kids, it's time to put the laundry away, and they can carry their piles upstairs, depending upon how old they are. So get them to help you with that. That teaches them the kind of homemaking skills that you want them to acquire. Uh, have I? Where is that? Uh, I'm missing it somewhere so that I can get that off. Wait a minute. Uh, hmm. Well, I'll just click on another question and that'll get that off. But Candy says she remembers ironing sheets and pillowcases and folding them. Yes, I hate that. Uh, Blue Sky said, if you want to be notified when the shop goes live, you can sign up there. I did miss one. Okay, let me see. Well, Krista says her dad ironed his own clothes. Our dad was in the military. So, um, well, not when we were when we were kids, but he had been in the military. So he was pretty specific about all of that. Uh, and then Mickey says, because our dad was in the military, ironing was very important to him. Yeah, they ironed sheets and everything. Candy's from the same generation. They ironed everything. Uh, so um, Blue Skies asked you to sign up to so you could be notified. Yes, I can put that on the community tab. And there's a question from Natalie. I got to find it. Natalie loves to iron. Okay. Well, you know what, though, Natalie? I'm glad you do. Uh, Nikki at Inspired by Nikki did a video. She does some beautiful homemaking videos. And the her video was titled, When a Thing Needs Doing, Do It. And it just made so much sense. You know, you got to iron, just iron put on some nice music or what I like to do is I'll put on a book on CD. I've got a, I mean, a, a book, on, an audio book. I've got a really nice Kindle that Blue Skies gave me and I'll turn it on. I'll put on a book on, on uh, an audio book and I'll listen to that while I'm ironing my aprons. 
And Tam said she uses the Happy Planner. Um, oh, so Angela said her sister stuck her arm in the ringer washer. I hope her arm turned out okay because the girl that I knew named Susie, her arm was amputated up to here. Hey, Glam. Oh, Tammy. Hey, it's good to have you there. So Libby said she uses her iron to flatten fabric before cutting and making clothes. That's mostly what I use my iron for, too. And then um, Hope says that she's loving these homemaking talks. She's been a stay-at-home mom for five years now. She has four kids, ages 12 to 1. She's still struggling to make a routine that she can stick to. Any ideas? Yes. So Hope, what you're going to want to do, first of all, is get a planner. I don't care what kind of planner you get, just buy one. You can buy them at Target. You can buy them online. I like this planner, the Inkwell Press, but it can But you know, it is a little pricey. So you want to buy something that's budget friendly. And if you haven't been using a planner before, you know, if, well, I like this one, but you can find one that works for you. Happy planner, whatever. Then decide. What are the things you want done in your house? And, and the fly lady routine is very helpful. I encourage you to start with that. Now, my favorite fly lady is Fly Lady Cat. She has several videos on how to do the fly lady cleaning system. I think she makes it make the most sense. And then put things out in your planner, write things down, um, Get, you know, put together a little control journal for yourself. And the control journal is a thing in the Fly Lady Clean System where you write out what the daily routines are. Because when you first start, you won't remember what they are. Um, you could go to Michelle at My Everyday Wife's Life. You can print off her printable for her daily routine and kind of see what they are. And then um, put on your planner what you're going to do every day. And then mark those things off on that little checklist. You know, having the checklist when you first get started is very important. So, and now you're a stay-at-home mom. You got the four kids, 12 to 1. So some of those kids, well, I was going to say some of those kids will be going to school, but they may not be. You know, you might be having homeschool or kids doing virtual school and that kind of thing. So what you may have to do is get up an hour early, an hour before the kids get up. So if your kids get up at 6.30, you may need to get up at 5 o'clock or 5.30 so that when you get up, first thing in the morning, you get up, you get yourself showered and dressed for the day and do your daily swish and swipe. And then you get them up and put them through their morning routine. And then and you're going to have to supervise it you know, just to kind of make sure they get it done in the time you want them to get them done and then get them downstairs and then you know, give them their breakfast. And you're going to have to plan what kind of breakfast you want them to have so that you can get that done before either they leave for school, if they're able to go out to school or before they have to be at the kitchen table or wherever room they're going to be in for virtual school. So and you kind of get that that routine set down first. But you're getting up an hour early gives you the opportunity to get yourself together, take a breath, have a little bit of peace and quiet before the madness starts. And then plan what you can do on certain days. And when you first get it started, it may seem overwhelming, but just keep plodding along. If a daily swish and swipe turns out to be too much for you, you can't do that, then swish and swipe Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You know, or just swish and swipe on um, Monday and Thursday. You know, put it on your planner for two days a week. Because if you haven't been cleaning the bathroom every day anyway, then switching it to, you know, include increasing it to Monday and Thursday, like twice a week, is going to be all the more better. And then uh, the other things that you want to do, you know, if you think about when you want to do laundry, if you're a stay-at-home mom, put on, and you've got four kids, you're going to need to do two loads of laundry a day. So after you get yourself dressed for the day, the first thing you're going to do is throw a load of laundry into the wash. While that load of laundry is in the wash, then you're going to get the kids up and get things started for breakfast and that kind of thing. Once they've got their school started, you've got your breakfast dishes cleaned up. You're going to throw that load into the dryer, throw the other load in the wash. And then you can start looking at, well, what cleaning do I need to do in the house for the day? 
Or it could be that once that's in, you say, oh, I'm going to sit down and have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. You know, take maybe a 15, 30 minute break for yourself. Now, you got a one year old. So that means you have a baby that you're going to certainly have to interact with quite a bit. And you might have a toddler or something like that. And when you've got kids that young, your time is not necessarily your own. So you're going to have to do things when the babies take their naps and that kind of thing. Uh, so you have to sort that part out, too. So try to figure out. Plot it out on the calendar, on your planner each day that makes sense and see what you can do. So just kind of try to sort it out that way. And maybe we can talk a little bit more and I can kind of help you come up with a routine that might seem more workable. Send me an email and we can talk about that. Oh, uh, let's see. So Natalie Facil, or Facil, her first time here, and this conversation is very interesting. Well, Natalie, welcome. Everybody say hello to Natalie, and we're glad you're here. And you know, Natalie, what I do here every Thursday, I just come on live, and I'll have a content of something that I want to talk about. And people have been asking questions about how I manage my house with my planner. And so the video I planned to show that didn't work out, so I had to go low tech and just kind of hold the planner up and show you that. But I did get through the stuff that I wanted to talk about. And then we do Q&A. I will answer questions to the best of my ability. Just so you guys know a little bit more about me is that, you know, I've been married more than 45 years. So I know a little bit about managing a home. I've raised three children. Uh, I'm a nurse by profession and I've retired from that. And I now I'm doing YouTube in my retirement and starting an apron shop. And I'm just really enjoying life. But I enjoy working with young homemakers and giving them the benefit of my knowledge. Now, did I run a perfect home? No. Is my home perfect now? No. If you just saw the video that I dropped on Monday, my whole house declutter, which if you haven't seen that, I'll put it in the link in the description box. Check it out. You'll see it is not perfect. And it is not completely organized and decluttered, but it's a whole lot better than it's been. And it is a work in progress. And that's what I try to encourage my homemakers here. It's making progress and not perfection. And my philosophy of homemaking is that homemaking and homekeeping is an art and a science. The art of homemaking is the therapeutic use of yourself to create a cozy, and in a cozy and inviting home for your family. That art includes the pictures you have on the wall, the throws you might have laying on your, on your um, sofa, the flowers you set on the table, the flowers that are growing in the front of the house, if you choose carpet or hardwood floor, if you make treats for the kids when they come in from school, all those things are part of the art. The kind of meals you prepare, little notes and lunch boxes, all that speaks to homemaking, creating that cozy environment. Homekeeping has to do with the cleaning, cooking uh, nutritious meals, as well as laundry, um, mending, and those kinds of things. Managing that smoke detector, making sure the roof is on and that there's no holes or anything like that. Seeing to it that your family is prepared for emergencies. You know, I've been talking about prepping on this channel as a homemaker's responsibility. So hopefully if you're in Texas and you had that power outage, some of the things that you prepared help you during that time. Now, that doesn't mean you have to do all of that managing yourself. For example, as far as the roof and all that kind of thing, you know, my husband takes care of that. But it's something that I do know that he's doing. If you're a single homemaker, you're making the home for yourself or for you and your family, then you're the one that's going to have to make sure that the roof is on tight and that the plumbing is managed and all that kind of thing. But that's a part of it. So homemaking is creating that cozy, nice environment. The homekeeping is the cleaning, the laundry, and all those kinds of things that goes into managing a home. Making sure your taxes get paid, those kinds of things. Getting the lawn cut, getting the snow removed. All that has to do with homekeeping. And um, so there's that. 
So those are things that you want to think about. And I've touched on that with some of the, my viewers before. So since this is your first time here, you will be new to all of this. And I'm glad you joined us today. Um, so Libby says this is the right place to start. And I do recommend the Fly Lady cleaning system because it does tell you different things to do. It just makes it easy for me uh, to, to just to follow the process. And then it becomes second nature to you. And then you just kind of do it. And we talked a couple of weeks ago about the fact that routines are so helpful because once you get comfortable with the routine, you just do what you need to do and you don't have to think about it. You just say, okay, today is Monday. This is what I'm doing. Today is Tuesday. This is what I'm doing. Today is Wednesday. And then like, for example, Wednesday, when I didn't feel very good, I didn't get any of my routines done. They just didn't happen. And then today is Thursday and I had an earlier appointment that I normally have on Thursday and I had a lot of other things going on. They didn't happen today. So that means Friday, I'll start my routines on Friday. There's no getting behind. There's no plain catch up. You just start on the day you're on and just, you know, get back on the cycle. Uh, let's see. Let's see, let's see. So, so Tam says, you know, her issue is by the time she finishes zone one and two, the boys would have it all messed up again before zone three. You know what? You don't have to, you don't want to have to think about it that way. Zone one, you're working in certain areas and you just do the four things that week in that zone. And you're doing your other daily maintenance work. So your maintenance work will be when you're doing your kitchen uh, duty every day. So when you're looking at your what you're doing in the kitchen, you think about when you get up in the morning and you hit the kitchen, when you come downstairs, the kitchen's already clean because you left it that way the night before. You've already got out a clean dish towel and a clean uh, dish cloth. And you start making breakfast and that kind of thing. And Tam, I think you're a stay-at-home mom. I'm not sure, but I think you are. So once the boys have had breakfast, you get everything washed up and they start their school day. If they're big enough to help you when um, they can maybe unload the dishwasher or whatever, unless you want to have all that done by the time they come downstairs in the morning. And then once you're done with the dishwasher and you've cleaned up after breakfast, then you'll do your daily clutter check and you do four clutter checks a day. That means you kind of and I know like in my areas for clutter, my dining room table, because I always take stuff out of the kitchen and set it there. If I'm working on something, I need it out of the way, the top of the microwave. And there's like a little shelf in the kitchen between the kitchen and the family room that I don't know. People just set stuff on. So four times a day. After you've done the breakfast cleanup, you just kind of look around and check those places where clutter normally gets and just kind of move those things back to where they belong. After lunch, you do another clutter check. OK, did somebody kind of move some things out? And then after dinner, there's another clutter check and before bed. And then when you have dinner, you have your you know, you make your dinner. You guys sit down together, you eat. And then after dinner, everyone participates in the after dinner cleanup. If they're big enough to carry a plate, they're big enough to participate in the after dinner cleanup. And maybe all that carrying the plate does for that three year old is they're carrying the plate from the table over to the sink and say, here, mama. And then you get it, you scrape it and you put it in the dishwasher or you put it in the sink. As they get a little taller and a little older, they can scrape it and put it in the sink. But they shouldn't just be getting up from the table and scooting. Somebody's bringing the dishes. Everybody's bringing their plate over to the sink. Number one, everybody, including hubby. But I know sometimes it's hard to get them involved in that. But everybody helps with the after dinner cleanup and they bring those dishes over to the sink. And then one of the kids can be washing, wiping down the table, putting the placemats away, wiping down the table, uh, scraping dishes or whatever. But everyone can be in there working together. But mom does the hardest part, which is the pots and pan and the stove. But the kids can help with some of that other stuff. They can scrape dishes and put them in the dishwasher. If they're hand washing the dishes, then once they're all scraped, you know, they can you can help them run the water or they can run it themselves and they can get up there, wash them and rinse them and put them on the counter to drain dry. And um, somebody can be responsible for sweeping the floor, that kind of thing. And then the kitchen's done. They go get ready for bed while they're doing that. 
You see if there's any last minute things in the kitchen that needs to happen. You put out your new dish towel, your new dishcloth, put the dirty one somewhere to dry. And I, what I'll do, my pantry, my laundry pantry is a part of my kitchen. So what I'll do is I'll take the wet dish towel, wet dishcloth that I'm just taking away. Either I'm going to put it in a bucket that I keep on top of the dryer to soak to whiten, or I'm going to lay it over the washer so that it can dry out because I don't want to throw that wet, damp towel into the bucket. I'll lay it and let it dry out first before I put it in the bucket. And then um, that's your daily routine. And if you need to sweep the kitchen floor, that kind of thing, you're going to do all of that. So once you're done, the kitchen is clean and you're going to do a tidy up before you go to bed. So you're going to check the living room or the family room. If the kids have left some things out, just kind of quickly pick them up, put them in a basket, take them upstairs to wherever they go. Or after dinner, before they go up to put on their PJs, OK, kids, dinner's done. We've got to tidy up real quick because it's time to get ready for bed. So everyone just kind of looks around. They pick up their toys their books, whatever, get those things put away. They put their book bags or their books or whatever they need for school the next day by the door. Or if they're doing homeschool, then they put them wherever it is that they're going to do their homeschool. So when they come down in the morning and after breakfast, they're ready to do that. And now don't worry about, you know, if kids mess things up because, I mean, it's life that happens. But just think how much of a mess it would be if you never got to those zones. So, so don't worry about that. Uh So now I hope um, you got the question you wanted. Okay, let me answer your question. This this video is the place to start. I recommend the Fly Lady cleaning system, yes. And, and Fly Lady Cat has a video on how to do the Fly Lady cleaning system for newbies. It's very good. Let's see. Uh, yes. Clean Mama has a very good system and it's very simple. So um, I, I've seen a couple of Clean Mama's videos. I don't follow her, but I know there are a lot of women on YouTube that do. So check out Clean Mama. If you think her system is simpler and will work for you, try it. And thank you, Michelle, for that reminder, because I forgot about her. But there's several women on YouTube that have their own cleaning system that works very well. So try Clean Mama. Uh, Christy said she signed up for the apron shop. She's really excited. Christy, I was so excited today. I was at Joanne's and I was choosing fabric for aprons. And the lady there gave me a couple of tips on a couple of things related to fabric, but it was just so much fun. It was just so much fun. And then when I went home, I stopped at Blue Sky's house. I said, you've got to see what I bought today. And she was like, you went to Joanne's without me? Well, I stopped them on my way home from the beauty shop. So it was like I couldn't have zigged all around and picked her up and then gone way back on the other side of town for shopping. Okay, so Natalie said she's also a stay-at-home mom. She has twins, 14 years old, both on the autism spectrum, and they flip the house. But she loves to clean and organize, so she always has work to do. Natalie, I have twins that are 48. So, hey. Um, we're both twin moms. So, hey, we got that in common. We've got several ladies here um, in our in this group that has children on the autism spectrum. So, yes, sometimes, you know, the house can get at sixes and sevens. So you're going to have to sort things out best for you. Now, what you might consider is trying to have fewer things for them to flip. So, like, there are some of the moms on that are really into minimalism. They just really have very few things that are just like sitting out, that kind of thing. That might be something you might consider. And guys, I'm getting a little dry. I'm going to need a drink real quick. Sorry about that. Um, so you want to think about that. Like what, first of all, what do your boys need I assume they're boys, but I just realized you just said you have 14 year old twins. You didn't say boys, but uh, and I think boys tend to be, be more autistic than girls. That's why I assumed it was boys, but I could be wrong. But anyway, you have twins. So think about what is out that 
they can get into. And you probably want to have some things out that you want them to get into so they're diverted from other things. So whatever it is that, that is okay for them to get into, make sure that's easily accessible. Oh, excuse me. Ooh, that was very indelicate. But make sure it's accessible. And then at the end of the day, like at the end of the night before bedtime, when it's time to like do that last tidy up, say, OK, kids, it's time to tidy up before bed and get them to help you pick things up and tidy up a little bit. And you'll know what's within reason for them to tidy up. And, yeah, you're going to have always have work to do and not just because they're autistic. That old adage, a mom's work is never done, is absolutely true. It's never done. And like even now, like I don't have kids at home now, so I'm a grandma now. And there's nobody here but me and the hubby. But there's always something to do. He makes as much mess as a two-year-old sometimes. Now, granted, he does help me clean. And I think there was a note on here. Somebody was asking about that. Let me find it. See if I can find it. So uh, Michelle, she says that's a good idea. She did one drawer today so she can keep going. And that's really a good idea, Michelle. I like that idea doing one drawer a day. You guys should check out Michelle's channel at My Everyday Wife Life. She has a lot of fun videos over there. So be sure and check her out as well. Uh, okay, I found oat mix, so thank you for that. So Dalutsu said she has a dirty dish pan. And so, yes, when you have to do dishes by hand, what you're going to want to do is, you know, you get them scraped out, rinse them off, and you're going to set them in the dish pan ready for washing. Now, I know Dalutsu has an issue with water where she is. So she may not be able to rinse them before she sets them in the dish pan. But what you can do is scrape them very well. And you might even want to take a cloth and wipe them off as well as you can and then set them in the dishpan. And then once you wash them, the cloth that you use to wipe them off, you can kind of set that out a little bit and lay it out to dry as well. What you don't want to do is to set a nasty cloth in a bucket of water and then leave the water to sit because that means the water will turn nasty too. When I'm soaking my dish towels, they're just, I mean, there's not there's not nasty stuff on them. They're just wet from re from drying things out or the dish rag. And then I'll put the bleach and that kind of thing in them. But I only let them sit for a couple of days. You let them sit too long, that water can get kind of nasty. So you don't want to do that. Okay. Oh, this is about the zone cleaning for my granddaughter. Yes. Um, so um, Alley Cat says that she often gets overwhelmed and the room zones sound like a great idea. Yeah, having the, if you're looking at one room alley cat, you say you're alley cat 82. So I'm guessing you're probably in your 40s if 82 is your birth date. So then the rooms that we're looking at for the various zones can work very well. If you're talking about for a high school student and you're trying to set up zones in one bedroom, it can also work very well, too. You just kind of break it up and then assign the zones on the week, just like we're doing the zones for the house. So, yeah, it can be very good. So Sylvia says her bedroom's got to be done. Yeah. And, and Michelle, you know, just to say, go clean your room. Sometimes if they're especially if they're um, scattered, if they can be very scattered, then they don't know where to start. But if you break the room up into zones, they know where to start. And you always teach them to start with making their beds. And even at three and four years old, they can learn to start pulling their covers up or they can help you make the bed. So they know it's part of the process. Not that it's going to look perfect because it's not going to look like when you would do it. But remember, they're just learning how to do it. Just like they had to learn how to walk and they look like Frankenstein when they was walking around at first. When they learn to make a bed, it's going to be very simple. It's going to be kind of whopper jaw, but it gets better with time. There it is. Fancy schmancy was how do me and my husband divide the share of the work in my home? Well, you know, he's retired and I'm retired. So now I'm a stay at home wife. You know, I'm a housewife now. So I pretty much do most of the cleaning in the house. 
And he does the outside work. And again, we're old school. So he does all the outside stuff. He does the lawn. He does the snow removal. He makes sure that the roof and all that stuff is done. If there's anything wrong with the plumbing, he calls the plumber. He takes care of all that stuff. But inside the house, I do most of the cooking. But if I don't feel like cooking today, I say, hey, can you make dinner? He'll say, sure. He likes to have fish for dinner. And I don't like fish, so I don't eat it. He catches it. He brings it home. He cooks it. He fillets it, does all these kind of fancy recipes. And I'll have something else the night we have fish. But I'll say he always brings home dinner because he does. But I'm not eating that dinner. But he'll cook a couple times a week if I ask him to. But sometimes I like to cook because I may be planning a video or something like that. I clean the kitchen every night. But sometimes if I cook, then he'll say, well, I'll get the dishes and he'll do the dishes. And then I'll like clean up. Like I'll start putting the food away because I know how I want things to be put in the fridge. And I just bought some new containers not too long ago. You guys probably saw my video on that where I got these containers that are really being very helpful in helping me put the food away and I can stack them and organize them in the fridge much more neatly. Um, I do laundry. I have a routine where I do laundry, you know, three or four times a week. If I don't get to laundry or feel like doing laundry or if I don't get to something he wants to wear soon enough, he'll do laundry. But he does the floors. One of the ladies asked about my floor routine. I'm like, well, I really don't have one. I sweep and I vacuum. But he does the mopping. And when I grew up, you know, in the 50s, you had those mops that you had to wring out like that. And it was pretty heavy work. And so my mom in our house, the girls didn't mop the floors. The men did. So my dad and my brothers mopped the floors and they took out the garbage. It kind of irked me and my sisters that all my brother had to do was mop the floors and take out the garbage. But that's the way things were in our house. My husband's home was very similar. In his house, they had seven boys and three girls. The girls learn how to cook, clean, do all that kind of stuff from their mom. The boys mopped the floors and took out the garbage. So here in our home, from the very beginning, he mopped the floors, he took out the garbage. But as young parents, we all split duties to a certain degree. Like in the morning when we were getting ready for work, when I was going out to work, I would get the kids ready, he made breakfast. When the kids come home to visit now, he always makes breakfast when they're here. And um, if it's a holiday or something special, he'll make at least take at least one day where he'll fry fish for everybody and all that. They expect dad to fry fish when they come home. So there's that. Um, but for the most part, I do most of the cleaning now, but he will help if I ask. And if he looks, if I look like I'm tired, he'll say, babe, why don't you just sit down? You know, we don't need to do that. Or you don't need to do that routine today. Or some days he'll say, well, I already did the swish and swipe in my bathroom. So you don't have to get it. Now I know his swish and swipe and my swish and swipe is two different things. But I'm not going to go back and redo the work he did, because if you do that, then they'll stop doing it. So if he said, I did the switch and swipe, already, I'm like, OK, bet. I'm glad you did. Thank you. Uh, let's see. So I do most of the housework now. But when I was working, we shared it. When he retired before I retired, then he did more of it because he was here. But we pretty much share things quite a bit now. But I kind of like doing the housework now. I enjoy being a housewife now because I got time to do it now, though, too. So I've got more time to focus on it. Carolyn said she's inspired. Good. Oh, Michelle says I was right. Zone five was one day in February. Yes, Tammy, the zone system covers the entire home in a month. You go from, you know, it covers each week. You cover a different area in, the, in your house. So by the end of the month, you've hit every room in your house, every room in your house. And if you think, well, gosh, I'm only getting to the living room once a month. Well, remember the zone cleaning is more of a deep cleaning. You're doing your daily tidy up maintenance stuff. In your family room, you're tidying up and picking up in there every night. In your living room, what's in there to pick up? In my living room, the furniture that's in there, I might go in there, sit down, read a book, snuggle up with a blanket under a light and read a book. But there's no there's no toys in there or anything like that. Unless the grandkids are here, then when the grandkids are here, the living room is where they play because it's open space. They, they flip and flop. They build little tents in there. They do all kinds of stuff in there. Some stuff I don't even want to see. 
one day I had to get after him because CJ was, had, was throwing a ball around. I'm like, okay, no ball playing in the house. That's out. But by the end of the month, you've touched on every room in your house. Okay. And uh, Dalutsu Glam Queen, her name is Tammy. Let's see. So, Tammy, I did not mean for this to be on this long. I only meant to be on for an hour. And look, here it is. But you guys keep asking questions. I didn't mean to be on this long. So, um, Michelle says, some people do the zone cleaning all in one day for one hour. Then they're free the rest of the week from zone cleaning anyway. And so you can do that. So, Michelle, I'm glad you brought that up. So when you're doing your zone cleaning, you work in your zone only for 15 minutes, five, 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 only for 15 minutes. So if, if I'm doing the main bathroom and I had deep clean the toilet, well, I do a daddy switch and swipe in there. So what's to deep clean on the toilet? Well, to wash down around the outside of the bowl, to spray cleaner on the floor, around the bowl, even though on every Monday, I'm kind of wiping down the bathroom floor and I may do it more often depending upon how many boys or men you have in your house. Cause you know, they tend to spray a little bit, but on that Monday when I, but on that day I'm doing my deep clean, I'm going to get out my more uh, intensive cleaners and I'm going to clean the outside of the toilet bowl, scrub all around the floor, that kind of thing. So that the toilet bowl is fresh and clean, that kind of thing. Shouldn't take more than 15 minutes. The next day, if I'm going to um, work on a space underneath the bathroom sink in 15 minutes, I should be able to get that done. Now, as Michelle pointed out, since there's only four things you have to do in the zone, that's an hour. 15 minutes times four is 60 minutes. So you can get that done in an hour. Then they don't have any more zone cleaning to do. It's up to you how you make it work. I like the routine of having something to do every day because it keeps me on track. Um, the secret slob is amazing. I love her. She is just so perky and she's got little kids. So she's got to make it work. You know, she's got three little ones. So her time is not her own, but she has made the fly lady system work for her. And she does it and she does it every day. She's got lots of videos about how it works too. So check her out as well. Just don't forget to come back over here. I don't want you to get to like her better than me, but she is amazing. I love the secret slop. You would really like her. And she operationalizes the fly lady routine in her videos every week. Let's see. Oh, Sylvia has five kids. She keeps toys in the playroom in her son's bedroom and only a few things in the living room. And she doesn't really like for the kids to have toys everywhere in her room. So, yeah, that's a good idea. Toys can be restricted to a certain area. Then they help to tidy up. All right. Well, ladies and gents, I think we have covered quite a bit. We have been on for two hours. People are starting to jump off. I did not intend to be on this long. Did I answer your questions about how to use your planner to manage your home? That was the whole purpose of tonight was I wanted to show you how to use your manner your planner to manage your home. Um, I will put some notes on about the things we covered tonight on my community tab so that you guys can check that out. And um, um, just to kind of have just a little bit of uh, to summarize a little bit, I'll put that on the community tab and then be sure and sign up for my apron list so that when I launch the shop, you'll know. Uh, check out the video that I did on Monday where I did my whole house declutter and you guys will see that I am not perfect. I am a work in progress, just like all of you. And um, I think that's it. So, guys, we should wrap this up because you got babies to put to bed and different things like that. And I'm glad you liked the live stream. And I'm sorry my high tech didn't work. I'll talk to you later. Good night.